The Raphidophora tetrasperma has become a very popular plant for houseplant enthusiasts, and we're gonna teach you today on how to actually propagate it here in Singapore at Terrascapes. So Sandy, we have this uh, Raphidophora tetrasperma here today, and mm. this has become a popular houseplant, at least in the States. Is it the same in Singapore? Yes, it is. It is quite popular now. Was it something that you were growing in terrascapes before or yes, not? Yes, we were growing it okay. already, so we got lucky. Oh, that is lucky. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, a lot of people are getting this now. Um, aeroids are, you know, typically a, easier to propagate, but I'd love to get a sense of like how you're propagating them and what medium you're doing and, and you know and Singapore is obviously a different climate than a yes, lot of a lot of the United States mm -hmm. so um, if we could go over like how long it usually takes to propagate this etc cetera, etc cetera, but right. love to know what you do sure. sure so what what we do here is to find a cutting mm -hmm. that has already at least one aerial root yep so if you take a cutting this way mm -hmm. and then that assures that the plant will root really really quickly and uh, the media that we use here is actually uh, cocoa chips, yeah. right? And it drains very well. Did I wonder you? if it's easier to get here too, cocoa chips yes, in is, Asia. Yeah, very, very yeah. easy. So it usually comes from like Thailand or Malaysia. So first of all, you start by putting in a little bit of cocoa chips in. Yep. And uh, we cheat. We put a little uh, slow release fertilizer in there first, ah. right? So then you stick your Raphidophora ref cutting in and you just pack it in with cocoa chips. So because the new cocoa chips are very, very dry, um, you'd have to give it a very, very generous and thorough watering. Are these cocoa chips, do they really expand within the pot or are they kind of like... No, they don't expand they don't very expand. much, yeah. Okay. But in time, they get a little wetter, okay. right? So, and so you do exclusively cocoa chips? Yes. Interesting. Because it's very humid here. Yeah. If we use any kind of like soil or potting mix, I would think that it takes too long to dry out yeah. and it could cause uh, like root rot. Yeah. So to top it all off, another sprinkling of uh, slow release fertilizer. How many roots does this need to develop in order for you I, to... I would at least another aerial root coming out uh -huh. and into the media. Okay. So that would keep the plant stable because you got two anchors and not just one. And then would you then transfer this into a new pot or would you keep it in the would, cocoa chips? I would just keep it in this one. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think it typically, typically take about uh, maybe three or four weeks mm -hmm. to like be ready for sale. And would you then um, encourage somebody to uh, put this in a new pot when they get it home? Uh, yeah, they could, they could. Okay. Uh, as long as it's a pot with holes. Okay, yeah. a pot with holes is important. Yeah, yeah. And would they do it with more cocoa medium or would you suggest even a, a potting soil or what do you think? I think here? it'd be best if they, they stuck to cocoa chips. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you don't give the plant too much of a shock. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced that? Like have anybody got your plants and said, oh, I transferred it into this other medium and... Yeah, sometimes they put it in like a pot that's too big or they water it too much and then you start getting lots of yellow leaves and that's from overwatering. Yeah. 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 Do you see any other like interest in aeroids or other raphidophoras? Are you like, what do you think is popular oh, here? Yeah, in... it's, it's getting very popular. Yeah. Okay. Aeroids, I think it's all over the world now, right? Yeah. yeah everyone's yeah. into aeroids. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is? Um, I think it's because they don't need like direct sun mm -hmm. all day. You know, they, they're shade loving plants mm -hmm. and uh, most people in Singapore, we stay in apartments and you don't get enough sunlight actually, just a few hours. So if growing by the windows helps uh, and these are the best plants to use. So, I mean, you're, you're dealing with a lot of sun, however, you yes. know, just a degree north of the equator. Uh -huh. So are you, um, are you growing them under shade cloth? Yes, we have to use shade nets uh, at least 50%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that is something that we don't always have to deal with in yes, the, the yes. States, depending yeah. on where you are. And you know, the, the, the trajectory of the sun in Singapore, right, it goes like above you. Yeah. But in the States, it kind of goes at the lower angle where you get yeah. more light in, right? Yeah. And that's why it's always difficult for most people to grow sun loving plants in Singapore. Yeah. When you're in apartments. Yeah. But if you've got a house, then great, yeah. you know? Have you propagated Raphidophora tetrasperma before? If you do it differently, then share below in the comments. And if you're keen to see how to propagate more plants, you could tune into some of the forthcoming videos here or go more in depth in the Houseplant Masterclass online.